be on camera? Are they sponsoring? Yeah, they are. So not Nature's Valley. Get those quarters. <laughs> Nature's Valley is not sponsored. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> I'll wait. Okay. Okay, why choose a rather trill name like the Beast? Ooh, trill. Trill. Um, <clears throat> well, if, if I can uh, speak from my heart on that question, um, I am a huge uh, science fiction fan. Uh, and, I, and I see um, X-Men specifically as like the ultimate metaphor for the black experience in the United States with mutants being the oppressed people that actually have all the dope superpowers. Um, that, so there's kind of a interesting dynamic there. And even the, the founder of uh, Marvel Comics, Stan Lee, has talked about modeling um, Professor X and uh, Magneto off of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. So I was always intrigued by that. And within that uh, collective, that superhero group, there's a guy called the Beast who is like big and scary and hairy and swole and everybody's scared of him, but he's actually an intellectual and a, a, a professor and a doctor. And, um, you know, it, it just reminded me of like walking down the street and, you know, so people fear you as a, as a, person that they ascribe certain stereotypes to uh, without acknowledging the intellect that's underneath that um, uh, threatening exterior, um, threatening humans, you know, rarely threatened by other mutants. They thought he was beautiful, you know. So anyway, when we were coming up with band names, like that was like where I was really excited. And my bandmates were less nerdy at least comic book nerdy. Eric I'm a different kind of nerd. Different kind of nerds. We're all kind of nerdy, but certainly the science fiction side, which comes out in a lot of our lyrics, was a big inspiration for me. But then there's also like other meanings of the beast, like the old Bart James <coughs> beast, or um, you know, the beast also like the belly of the beast. There's like a socio-political context for the beast. Yeah. Um, I was so, gonna mention that one because this group got started nine years ago when he was working on his master's in Pan-African Studies. So that kind of stuff was very much on his mind and he's kind of bringing those conceptions to us. So the first EP we did was called Belly. Just, Belly. That was all kind of more, more. the words the beast meant more than they do now. Now that's just the band name. And it's been that way for a while. And so we're just the beast. The beast, yeah. Trill, I like that way of the, I'm, no one's ever called our band name Trill before. Yeah, well, because like, for African American vernacular, yeah, because you know it's good that you said you know like science fiction, and then you think of like Afrofuturism yeah. in your lyrics. It's like it's a good way to incorporate and kind of coalesce <coughs> hip hop into because your sounds a little like I get some like bluegrass tunes yeah. sometimes, and it's like I like this, you know. So it's like your music's kind of tackling a different type of beast. Mm. Like that, like phonetically or sonically, you know what I mean. I need to write. We need to write that down. That's going in the bio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, how did you like collaborating with Fonte, Nice Wonder, and Bradford Marcellus? Well, that was a really uh, a special project. Um, a Freedom Suite. Um, so we had just put out in two thousand nine or eight. <laughs> Uh, our debut album, um, Silence. Silence Fiction, yeah. And Silence Fiction, it was, so, it was so fun because for us it was like stepping onto the scene with hip hop, jazz, there's no computerized drum tracks, it's all like live drums, very jazzy, very out. And, uh, but then a lot of my friends who were like hip hop heads, like boom bap era hip hop heads, especially with Ninth right down the street in Raleigh, were like, but where the, you know, where's the boom bap though? You know, like those live drums were a little too like, jazzy for them. So we had a conversation, we're like, oh, why don't we try to bridge those two gaps more um, with a collaborative project that truly merges like jazz and hip hop. So we um, reached out to my mom, who's a jazz vocalist, <coughs> like, let's do this album together. We'll bring in some hip hop producers, we'll do some more jazzy stuff, and it'll be more of a mashup of uh, like hip hop and jazz, whereas our stuff was really like jazzy music with lyrics on them, you know, slightly different uh, nuanced take. So yeah, we got like Questlove from The Roots, um, uh, Branford Marsalis, Angela Davis, Cooley High. 
Well, I'm talking about okay. the interviews. Okay, the interviews. So, the, the so yeah. like, Bradford wasn't playing on the record. He was being interviewed, mm -hmm. and he talks about minstrelsy on the show and how people compare minstrelsy historically and the negative stereotypes associated with minstrel characters with hip-hop and how you have, like, the gun-toting gangster and the, and the butt-naked, you know, sapphire. Like, it's, it's these same recycled stereotypes that have been oppressing black people for generations are just revitalized through hip-hop. So there's interviews. Angela Davis is on there talking about, uh, you know, Amiri Baraka's on there. And so then on the musical side, it's like Fonte, Ninth Wonder, Cooley High, Charlotte Ammons. Um, so we definitely wanted to keep it North Cat, like Carolina based, and then uh, and then a multi generational um, with Nina Freelon singing vocals and us doing the music with different producers. And so yeah, it was great. It was an honor and. Uh, we idolize those guys. I mean, they're 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 just it for hip hop and and you know foreign exchange, uh, Nicolay like these night like they're the best. That's the, the yeah. That's the stuff that got us really excited to do our band. Like watching the ascendancy of Cooley High, Ninth Wonder, Foreign Exchange. Like their initial arc, especially Foreign Exchange, was a big inspiration to the early Yo, version of the Beast, for sure. Foreign Exchange is so big. And then to see Foreign Exchange emerge out of Little Brother. Mm -hmm. It's like Little Brother, big hip hop band, Grammy nominated, you know, like, um, or not Grammy, I guess Knight, Knight got Grammys, but outside of Little Brother, but like major label, they got signed to a major, they were from Durham, they went to Central, like, this is a big deal, you know, and then Fonte, after Little Brother, started singing. Yeah. And like we're like, okay, we knew you could sing from the listening and you know, in the minstrel show, but like but he's really especially with Leave It All Behind, like yeah. we were like there's sixteen bars. Yo, <laughs> like yeah. there's no rapping on that record and it's beautiful mm -hmm. like artsy R and B Nicolay, because it's different. Connected was different, it was more yeah. hip hop, it was more like a Justice League mixtape with Nicolay producing instead of Knight. But by the time you could leave it all behind and, and the Grammy nomination with Lucina it was just like, whoa. They, it almost gave us permission to be weird and quirky and out. They're really like the yeah. first people to kind of go there. I think one of the things especially is you mentioned that you got to hang with Fonte and he had like this multi-year plan that's probably still playing out. Like he had this conception very clearly artistic with where the foreign exchange was going. And we only know by album by album, but just that, that gave us, yeah, like some confidence that we could think more carefully about incorporating songwriting into hip hop and jazz and not just bars and beats and stuff, because we come from different backgrounds. Pierce from rapping and infusing jazz with his mom, the three of the rest of the band are jazz kids that are interested in afro diasporic music, like we all touched reggae and funk, but like this conversation that we've been having as a band for the past 90 years, foreign exchange is like <coughs> early, like it's okay, keep, yeah. keep collaborating with each other, stuff will happen. Do you guys think there's something special about this moment in the Triangle area, in Durham and North Carolina in music? And how would you describe that? Hell yeah. Like, I think of Durham specifically as like the cultural nucleus of the triangle. You know, we're like in the middle. Even when you have things popping off, like, so uh, Knight does these amazing parties, DJing and, uh, and Raleigh. And, you know, there's stuff popping throughout the triangle. But, you know, Durham is, I feel like, the heartbeat. Um, and I think, of, uh, I think of the triangle in this area almost like, like well, I'll quote uh, Big Daddy Kane from the record he did with, uh, with Little Brother, Brooklyn in the South, you know, and there are different boroughs, and each borough has its own character. And you know, Chapel Hill's like largely white college town with a kick-ass venue right up the street in Carborough in, in, the, in the Cat's Cradle where that brings in national acts that, that do some wonderful things for the local scene. Um, you know, Raleigh has its own scene. It's a little more expensive. There's a lot more dance clubs in Raleigh. Like K97.5 is mainstream with the PNC Arena. There's like different things happen there. And in Durham now, especially now that we have venues, now that we have festivals like Art of Cool, we have curators. And it's almost like a resurgence of our uh, legacy as, as the uh, Black Wall Street of the South. You know, and, but our, our currency now isn't, isn't NC Mutual Life or or uh, the insurance company, or, or the or the banks. It's like our culture is our currency, yeah. I mean, and we're it's, it's we're wealthy. Up. We're like throwing Harriets out, you know. Like, <laughs> it's, there's so much, there's so much here, and uh, you know, I mean, my mom is. I think about her a lot because she lived in Cambridge, and 
moved to Durham and started her career here in Durham. And uh, a lot of people, you know, would ask her why she didn't move to New York when she got her first Grammy nomination. Or, you know, there's so many places you could be a successful musician. But she did it, like, right here from Durham. Like, Prince staying in Minneapolis, I don't need to go nowhere. So I think that uh, a lot of artists like, like my mom sticking around and, and investing in home and blooming where they're planted has been an important element for uh, making this a dope scene. And it's such a, a critical moment with Art of Cool in his third year with the roster as dope as it is. Yeah. I mean, for us, like we're, we were in Philly a couple weeks ago recording with Steve McKee. He's the drummer for Bilal. We met him because, uh, you know, Sicily called steak like I need a drum kit at Motorco, stat, he showed up, Bilal's getting ready, and we're building with Steve McKee. Steve is like, come to Philly. So like, we're, our whole next album will be, will be produced by the guy who produced Joe Scott's last record. Because Art of Cool is bringing artists like that here to Durham, and, and we're a part of that conversation now through the festival. So I think it's like, you know, people like Cicely are very important for a scene like this. Same for, I remember, Ninth Wonder brought, uh, who did he bring? He brought DJ Premier and, uh, and uh, Pete Rock to the cradle, sat them both on thrones, and had uh, the Remix Project doing their beats live. And then Jamla artists like rapping out the, the classic verses. This is at the cradle. And then you see like little things, like local producers under Jamla are now getting placements, you know, co-productions with Pete Rock here, or, you know, beat with Talib Kweli here. And you know what I mean? Like, when, when, when the curators, like Cicely Knight, when, when they take the time to reinvest in their communities in that way, that's when the, the upper echelon of that is, okay, well now, of course, Rhapsody's at the, at the White House and uh, with, you know, with, uh, on Kendrick's latest album, the only MC on Kendrick's latest album. Um, it's like, yeah, because, because it, we're, we're, we're cultivating the talent that's already here. Um, which I think is, is, is a beautiful thing. Yeah. I think the missing link was curators. Like for the longest time there had always been great talent in the triangle, universities, arts, whatever. Um, and I wrote a blog post about this year ago, like all the jazz kids from Central and UNC when they graduated just go to New York. So like, you know, brain drain, but like creatively. Um, but then the audience is obviously here. There's different creative type people, intellectuals, people who like different kind of things, progressive. People with money. Yeah, I mean all those things kind of go together. But there's just some point, and it probably has something to do with Art of Cool and the resurgence of downtown Durham, where people are staying. Classic example, Zoo Crew. They posted on uh, Facebook the other day that they formed their own LLC. Like, That's great. They're investing in being a band in Durham. And they could have graduated from Central and gone out to LA or something, and they're staying here. And I'm just I'm thrilled for so that generational ripple effect. Like, so they're going to inspire kids from <coughs> Central to stay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, it's just going to keep happening. Well, that's it for time. Oh, yeah. Thank you so cool. much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's fun. Nice to, uh,